Hello friends, welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and today I am excited to share a new project that I'm going to be working on throughout the course of this month. So what I have in front of me is a traveler's notebook album that I'm going to be making for a vacation that my husband and our children and I took uh, last summer. So this was a trip that we did uh, up north in Michigan to Traverse City where we did a bunch of things with the kids but then we also did some wine tasting and went to some breweries together. This was a project that I I designed and I like put all the pieces together right after that trip happened but then never had the chance to actually put it together. The nice thing about that is because I did have it all kind of figured out and I've got on my computer, I've got like a, a virtual flip through of the album that I can go back and reference. All of my journaling is already done. And because I did all of that, it's going to make the, um, the task of putting this project together that much easier. So what I've done is I've gone through all of the spreads that I had ready to go and I split them into four, four days worth of, of spreads. So for the next month, every Saturday, I'm going to be taking one of these packets of spreads and putting them together in my book. My book is um, just homemade. So my my cover is a pattern paper from the Paige Evans Horizon collection. And then I already have a bunch of just plain white paper to work with. And I did go ahead and stamp out the title back when I was designing this page. So the title page is done, but the rest of it I still need to do. Once I get the pages all done in here, the last thing I will do is stitch this book closed and trim off the excess around... Um, around the book uh, for my cover and for the inside pages, anything that pokes out. So that is my plan. In terms of supplies, I have uh, my photos, my journaling cards, and some ephemera from the trip, but I'm also using the Paige Evans Horizon Collection for the whole album. So I had a six by eight paper pad that I'll be using. I already have the papers trimmed. And then I also have two of the embellishment packs. So one that's got like tags and, uh, like little, little bits, like little uh, icons and that sort of thing. And the other one was a floral set. So I've got a bunch of florals. I also have some of the cardstock stickers left from the collection that I will be using up in this album. And then uh, some stamp sets. And that's really just about it. So for today, we're going to get started with the first couple of spreads in this project. Um... What I plan to do is to put you guys on fast forward and just go ahead and get these assembled and then we'll slow down at the end to close you guys out and then we'll just continue this process for the next couple of weeks until we get this whole album completed. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with today's pages. Okay, so let's jump into putting these pages together. The first thing I'm going to do here is clear off my desk and make room for everything just because, you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on on my desk right now. And then I am going to pull over the photos and the paper for the first of the spreads. So one thing I will mention is that um, for the majority of the papers I'm using, those came from the six by eight paper pad. Now, six by eight is not the is not the full size of a traveler's notebook page. It you know I can definitely cut it to be the 4.25 inches wide, but it is only eight inches tall. So there is a little bit of room at the top and the bottom that would not be filled in with one of those pages. So what I decided to do with all of the papers from the six by eight pad that I will be using is to cut them in a four by eight. So that way it'll be as if there is a white border around the outside of all of those papers. So uh, you will notice that as I'm working on this page. So the first thing I did there for this one was to go ahead and adhere down that Big Cat Brewing Company uh, logo right there. Now, when I go on trips like this, I always pick up ephemera. Like I will grab brochures, I will grab business cards, I will grab whatever I can get my hands on, especially things that has the names of the places we're going to. So in this case, we had a map 
or something of that measure that had the Big Cat Brewing Company logo on it. So I brought that home and fussy cut the logo out in order to use it on my photo right there. So I just taped it down with my roller adhesive. Then I wanted to make a little flip out portion. So again, I have that little square map, which was part of a larger map. It was just like a little section to highlight that specific town, um, which was Cedar, Michigan. That is where this brewery is located. So I cut that out into a square it was a square to begin with, but I created my own journaling card, which says we ate here. Um, I want to say that was from a bunch of printables, or maybe it was, um, I think it was a digital stamp set that I got from In a Creative Bubble. I'm pretty sure about that. Anyway, so I made that one myself, just a little square journaling piece, typed in the menu, <laughs> the food that we ate at this all-you-can-eat buffet, and then um, I printed out a picture of Jonah and I in a little square. So I've got a picture of Aaron and Izzy and a picture of Jonah and I. That's who went to this uh, this what do I want to say, this brewery, which because we went there in the morning, it was just like an all-you-could-eat buffet, and we had heard really good things about it, so it was delicious. It was very good. Anyway, then I took a piece of scrap cardstock. You can also use uh, like regular copy paper. It's actually, it has a nicer fold if you use regular copy paper versus cardstock. I just had cardstock like literally right beside me. So I just grabbed that, cut a piece at two inches wide by whatever that square was tall. Let's say that was like three inches tall. And then um, sandwiched the top flip part on top of it and then adhered the other one down onto the back. So I could just um, put the whole, like adhere the whole square down onto the background paper, and then that one portion flips up. Then I went and grabbed my score tape. That is my favorite way to adhere down pages like this into a book. Went around the perimeter of the photos and of the background paper, and then I'm just adhering those down onto these loose papers. So like I said earlier, this notebook is homemade, so the book did not come assembled. And I actually prefer it that way. I find that they are so much easier, they're so much, it's so much easier to work with loose papers versus working in a book that has, you know, staples or that's already sewed shut. So I don't mind that at all. And now we're going to move on to the second spread. So this one is um, pictures that I took at a winery that we went to. It's one of our absolute favorites called 45 North um, and Traverse City. So this is all Traverse City area in Michigan. So from 45 North, I grabbed one of their pamphlets and I'm just going to use two parts of it in order to create a flip out portion on this next page. So the top portion there um, I didn't care so much about and so I'm going to cover that up with a photo but the pamphlet itself is not as as wide as a traveler's notebook page so I am going to add a little strip of pattern paper to the back of my photo where it would hang over the pamphlet and you'll see that as we get there so I just cut the paper that you see here which is the same exact paper that I'm using as the background that way it just makes everything cohesive or the background what do I want to say the pattern paper that will be the second page in this spread so then I added my tape around the perimeter of the pamphlet there, and then I'm going to adhere my photo onto the front of that of it right here. So you'll see that as it goes on like so. Then when I flip it open, you can see where that piece of um, pattern paper overhangs. So it looks nice because the inside of that pamphlet I wanted to keep where it's got the 45 north. Um, that's like their sign at the entryway of the vineyard and um, I just like the way that that looked so that is that then I added a photo to the other side of the pamphlet which you can see here and I'm going to adhere that into the inside or onto the left side of my traveler's notebook spread however um, this is a little bit longer <laughs> than the page itself mostly because I offset my pages just like 
ever so slightly to make it easier to close the pages and to sew them shut later on in the process. So you'll see that almost all of my, well not almost, all of my photos and my pattern papers are slightly, slightly offset from that center fold. Um, and it just worked better to go ahead and get everything adhered down and then to cut off just a smidge of the inside portion uh, since if it overhangs I can't cut that off because that's where the fold is so I, um, I had to make it that way. So in addition to the pamphlet, I also grabbed a business card. And from that business card, I used a circle punch to punch out that 45 North logo right there. And I'm just going to add some adhesive to it and stick it onto the photo. I love that photo. I think that looks so super cool. So super cool. Anyway, so I'm just gonna stick it right in the middle and then we're gonna work on the right side. So for this one, I had a little map that has a star on it for where this brewer or where this brewery where this winery is located so what I want to do is create a hidden journaling thing that I can pull out from behind the photo so I added score tape just 1 8 inch score tape to the very edges of the photo um, and then I'm going to add another at the bottom but first I want to adhere and create this journaling portion so that I can stick it on the back of my photo like this. You're going to see in just a second and it's going to let me know where to add my score tape at the bottom so that the journaling doesn't get lost behind the photo. I think that'll make more sense here in a second when we get to that. But I also want to add something that I can pull out this journaling with. I do leaf through the ephemera pack first just to see if there's anything that I could use as a tab. I ultimately don't find anything. So what I will do is go into my stash of tab stickers. Mine are from, um, what do I want to call it? What is it called? <laughs> Illustrative Faith. There we go. My tab stickers are Illustrative Faith. They are no longer available in their sticker form. They are available in a cardstock form, but I also know that there is another company. I will link it in the description box below. There's another company that does tab stickers like these ones, um, but I love them just for adding a quick tab onto either a pullout or a page or you know something of that measure so but yeah so illustrated faith does still have them in cardstock form they just you would have to add your own adhesive to the back of them so that gives me my tab at the top now i can position it on the back of that photo add my adhesive so that it will um it'll stop the journaling from going all the way down back behind and then making it really hard to get it out. And then I'm gonna go back through this car, or not this, uh, this ephemera pack. I'm gonna go back through the ephemera pack one more time and see if there's anything else that I would like to add to this page just to spruce it up a little bit. I find this floral cluster and I really like the way that it looks. It has all of the colors from the painterly background paper and looks really good. And then I found another um, it's like a, what do I want to say? It's kind of like a tiny word sticker, but it's not. It's something I had to trim out. And I want to say it says happy, happy in something. <laughs> I can't really remember happy. Let me see if I can see it. Happy today. Happy today. Yes, happy today <laughs> is what it says. So I'm going to stick down my photo, just make sure, making sure to get it nice and centered. Then I can and I can insert my journaling right behind it, stick that all the way down. I'm going to add that cluster down at the bottom right corner of the photo, just to give it almost like a photo corner type look, I suppose. And then I will add this little um, word bit right next to that underneath the photo just to complete the clustered look. Now that is going to be it for this spread. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before, add my score tape to the edges all the way around both of those and then we will adhere them into the book. Um, yes, so I only have one roller dot adhesive left, like one refill of it. Or I should say the last refill is in my roller adhesive right now. I need to place an order for more. So I will be using a lot of score tape throughout the process of this album. Um, but I do edit 
a bunch of it out so you don't have to see me like stick the tape down and take the adhesive or the sticky back part off um, for every single thing that I do here but just know that there is a lot of score tape in this project but I do use roller adhesive I do <laughs> I'm I don't only use score tape I just have a ton of it in my stash so you know that is that so next I'm going to trim off the edge right here just to get everything lined up correctly and then I'm going to pull over both sides of the spread and see if I want to add any additional embellishments to the inside of this flip Ultimately, I'm going to find a sticker from my sticker sheet, and these are cardstock stickers that says experience. And I played around with some different places where I could put it, and then ultimately I put it kind of, kind of where it is now, but just a little bit down from there. The pamphlet itself was like a velvety cardstock texture. Like it felt really nice, but it also made it easy to pull up the stickers when I didn't like where they went. So that's where this is going to go. And we're going to call that spread done and move on to the next one. So this next spread is a picture that my husband took of me and Izzy when we were walking uh, like in this downtown area in a place that's called Sutton's Bay. So it's part of the Traverse City area. It is the cutest little town like it's got a bunch of buildings that are all painted different colors think like teal and pink and orange and blue and like so colorful it was like a rainbow town they had um some like they had what I want to say some shops that had outdoor shopping areas which is what this one was right here it was for garden ornaments and they were just super colorful and fun so I had Erin take a picture of Izzy and I as we were walking, and I just love all of the colors that it captured. It's so, so fun. I definitely would go back to this little, this little village. It's not really a village. I don't even know what to call it. This little town. Again, <laughs> for sure I would. So um, what I want to do here is I am going to create another pocket. So you can see up at the top there, there's a map that's got a ribbon through it. So what I did is I took a map and I folded it up to create a pocket of sorts. Inside of that pocket is an article that I took out of just a magazine that had a description of the Sutton's Bay area, what it was, what kinds of shops were there, um, and whatnot. So I folded that up, I stuck it inside the map pocket, and then that is going to go behind the uh, journaling card that you see right there. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier and just put my score tape around the perimeter of the card or around three of the sides of the card, and then I will add an extra piece where the bottom of the map will be once it's inside, just again, so it doesn't fall down and get lost. So that is going to be that right here. And then I can stick that down inside. And then I went through all of my ephemera pieces and found a couple of different things that I really liked. So one of them is a door. It's like a garden shop door. And then I found a, a box or a planter of um, flowers there. And then the cardstock sticker that says happy. So I'm just going to make this little embellishment cluster here at the bottom. I love the way that it brought in like a colorful door, colorful shop looking thing because that's just what this area really, really was to me. And then I also have one that says Wonderlust and it's this pink banner that I'm going to add some adhesive to and stick it at the top of that photo. And that I believe is going to complete this spread. So we're just going to add our score tape to the backs of these and then we're going to adhere them down into the book um, onto the pages. So the way that this works when you are working with loose pages is I like to have my pages folded in half and in like a bookish form, but then you're basically working on the, on one side of the pages first, and then we're going to work on the opposite side of the pages as we go. So it's going to build up where all of the pages on the left, as you can see them up in that upper left hand corner they're all going to be on the left side and then when we get to the middle of the book and then start working our way towards the end it'll fill in the other side 
the other side of it. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, yeah, that's that's the best way I can explain it. So it is important to make sure that you're putting your pages on right side up. I always double check myself, and then uh, just to make sure you're being real careful about adding the pages where they go. So this is the last spread we're going to work on today. This one is from the same town, so that's Sutton's Bay, and it is their ice cream shop, which is called Scoop 22. And what I did here is I had a bunch of pictures of our ice creams that we that we ate, and then of like Izzy eating her ice cream, and then Jonah and Izzy fell asleep, like on the bench. Well, Jonah fell asleep on Aaron, and Izzy fell asleep on the bench next to Aaron. <laughs> so I took pictures of them because I just thought it was so cute. Like it was after we had been walking around all day and it was really hot. So it just, it was cute. And in that picture, Jonah's face is just the sweetest little face. So of course I had to make that picture my big picture. Um, so then what I did once I figured out where I wanted those photos to go I went through my ephemera pack to try and find some different pieces that I liked. I found this ampersand, which I end up choosing because I like the way that it pops off of the black table uh, next to Aaron and Jonah. And then I went through my tiny word stickers and I found the word you and the word me. So then when I stick them on there, it will say you and me. And I just like that because it's you know a picture of the two of them. So then I will stick down those little tiny squares. Now those are, gosh, I want to say like an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. They might be an inch and a half, but I'm pretty sure it's an inch and a quarter in order to make them fit nicely onto this paper. I added a label to the bottom of the photos where I can write in the location where we are at. So I will write in scoop 22 uh, on that little label and then I'm going to stick this ephemera down onto the photo as well right like that so those tiny word stickers are just from my stash they were from like an Allie Edwards story kit I believe and they just happened to be pink which I thought was nice I did find white ones at first but then I really liked the way that the pink ones looked instead of the white so that's the you and me last but not least I'm going to go through my stickers see if there's anything I like there I considered adding that discover sticker up at the top and ultimately decided against it here is where I'm going to write in the scoop 22 throughout this album I will have a few of these labels just to help me keep track of where we were at and then we're going to go ahead and add these ones into the book as well so again score tape I do like to use one quarter inch score tape for actually putting the pages into the book and then for things like ephemera or adding photos or anything like that I use my 1 8 inch score tape and those I get from scrapbook.com they're just really great quality um, and I, I super like them so here is the last one we're going to do here we'll just add this down and then um, we'll bring over the book and kind of put it all back together in order to close out the video uh, one last thing I will say is I love adding large photos onto my travel notebooks and that makes these things a lot easier. So almost, if not every, I think every page has a large photo and then a designed you know, page next to it. So you will see that that is pretty much my formula when it comes to travelers notebooks. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and slow back down. Okay, so that finishes up the first portion of this travel album. So we've got four spreads that we completed. We've got this one with a little flip out. We've got this one, which has a large flip out and a little hidden journaling. Let's tuck you back down in there. And then we've got this spread with a full picture and another tuck out. This is just the map of the area and last but not least the ice cream page so that gives me four spreads done and lots more to go <laughs> so 
I hope that you guys enjoyed the process of putting these four pages together, spreads together. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos. I will be back again next Saturday to complete the next few spreads in this book. Until then, I hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye now.